back to the series. Although it's fun to play rock, paper, scissors, it's even more fun to put your entire life savings on the line. Let's change our program so that Alice can offer a wager to Bob and whoever wins will take the pot. This time, we'll start with the changes to the JavaScript front end and then go back into the reach code and connect up the functionality. Now since funds will need to be transferred, we'll record the balances of each participant before the game starts. At the end, this will show us what they won more clearly. We'll add this code in between the account creation and the contract deployment. Let's retrieve the balances from each account. The general process will be the same, regardless of if we're retrieving the balance of Bob or Alice. Let's create a function or an operation that we can use to retrieve the balances of these accounts, specifically Alice and Bob's accounts. We'll call it get balance, and it will take in Alice or Bob, and it will use the reach standard library, so stlib, that's what we created on line four, to get the balance from the account. So this is an asynchronous function that takes in an input, who, this will be Alice or Bob's account, and then uses the reach standard library to retrieve the balance of this account. Now this balance can have quite a few decimal places. We can actually feed it into another function that lets us format it so only four decimal places show. We'll call this function format. It'll take in a balance to be formatted and then use the format currency function from the reach standard library. We'll provide it the input, which should be the balance, and then four because we want only four decimal places. Then we can apply this function inside of get balance. We'll take the output of the balance of function and feed it into format. This will format the balance so it only has four decimal places. Now since the format function is not asynchronous, we don't need the await keyword. It will just run synchronously. The balance of function is not synchronous, so we need to use the await keyword in order to force it to run. Now let's use get balance to retrieve the balances of both Alice and Bob. We'll call get balance using await because it is an asynchronous function. For who, we'll pass in Alice's account, ACC Alice. Then we'll do the same for Bob's account, reusing the same functionality. We'll use the get balance function, but this time pass in Bob's account. So we have the balances of Alice and Bob. The next step we'll take is updating Alice's interface object to include her wager. On the back end, we'll refer to the wager as wager, and it'll start off at five network tokens. Now we're using a function as well as a concrete value in the participant interact interface. The function is the player constructor, and the concrete value is our wager. Both are valid things you can have in this interface. Now we'll also need to modify Bob's interface so that he can accept or reject the wager. To keep things simple for now, we'll make Bob always accept the wager. This function will be called accept wager, and we'll implement it in line on the front end. It will take in an amount, and always accept it. Now this amount could have a bunch of decimal places. We can actually reuse our format function so only four decimal places are shown. Once the computation is finished, we'll retrieve the balances again and show a message summarizing the transfer. We can actually reuse the get balance function that we created before. Now to show the transfer to the user, we can use some log statements. We'll say Alice went from their before amount, which was before Alice, to after Alice. The account started at this value and then became this value after the computation. Let's also do the same for Bob. So these changes we've made to the front end only deal with issues of presentation and interfacing. The actual business logic of making the wager and transferring the funds will happen in the reach code. 
The first thing we'll need to do is update the participant interface. On the front end, we added the wager amount to Alice and the accept wager function to Bob. We'll need to make similar changes to the back end so the wager actually takes place. To add the wager to Alice, we'll just add it to the participant interface. It'll have the same name, wager, and it'll be a number, so we'll give it the data type uint. Uint stands for unsigned integer, or a whole number without a positive or negative sign. It's unsigned. For Bob, we'll need to add the accept wager function. This is a function, so we'll denote it with fun, and its input is a wager, a uint. The output of this function is null. Nothing's returned to the back end. On the front end, all we do is print a log statement. Now in this application, we have three steps. We have Alice's step, Bob's step, and the step they do together. Let's update Alice's only step first. We'll retrieve the wager from the front end just like we did Alice's hand. We'll use the interact object and access the wager. Now since the wager is a concrete value and it's not a function, we only have to do dot wager. Dot get hand was a function, so we have these open close parentheses. Now in addition to publishing Alice's hand, we'll also want to publish the wager. This allows Alice to share her wager with Bob. Alice will also transfer her amount as a part of the publication. We chain the operations using this dot. Now this application would throw an exception or throw an error if we did not publish the wager amount before allowing Alice to pay it. This is because the consensus network needs to be able to verify that the amount of tokens included in Alice's publication match the same value available to the consensus network. Now to Bob's step. Bob needs to be given the opportunity to accept the wager and transfer his funds. We can use the accept wager function from the front end to interact with Bob. We'll use the interact object and access the accept wager function. And we'll pass in that wager since it's been published to the blockchain network. Now once Bob's only step has finished, Bob will pay the wager. At this point, the decentralized app, or the dApp, is running in a consensus step. The contract itself now holds twice the wager amount. Before, it would compute the outcome and then commit the state. But now, it needs to look at the outcome and use it to transfer the funds appropriately, based on who wins. To calculate who gets how many tokens, we'll calculate what Alice gets and what Bob gets. This syntax allows us to store two values from the computation. Let's write it out. If the outcome equals two, then Alice is one. Alice should get two portions and Bob will get zero portions. If the outcome equals zero, then Bob has one. Alice should get zero portions and Bob should get two. Now if the outcome is not zero and it's not two, then it's a tie. So they should each get one portion. With this code, if both of these conditions are false, meaning the outcome is not zero or two, this will be the result. Alice and Bob will get what they put into the contract. Designing it in this way provides some security so that if the outcome somehow becomes three or seven or some other number that's invalid, both users would get their same portions back. We also use portions here instead of the wager amount to make this more reusable. This works no matter what the wager amount is. Now that we know the proportion for each participant, we can multiply it by the wager and pay it out. We'll use the transfer function. We'll transfer Alice's proportion times the wager to the Alice participant. Then for Bob, We'll take Bob's proportion, multiply it by the wager, and send it over to Bob. It's important to note that the transfer takes place from the contract to the participants, not from the participants to each other, because all of the funds reside in the contract. They're given to the contract and then redistributed out. Once the transfer's taken place, we can commit the game. 
Then Alice and Bob will see the outcome of the game. Let's run it. We'll do dot slash reach run. This will access the executable and run our app. Alice played rock, Bob accepted the wager of five, Bob played scissors, and Alice wins because rock beats scissors. Now you might be wondering why the balances aren't exactly 15 and five. Well, it costs gas to run transactions. Let's try running it again. This time Bob wins. Alice loses five tokens and Bob gets about five tokens. Let's try to get a tie. And it's a draw. Now you might notice that Alice and Bob's balances go back to 10 every time we run the program. That's because we create fresh new accounts on the front end. Now it turns out there's a major security vulnerability in our program. We'll fix this in the next lesson, so make sure you don't launch with this version, or Alice is going to go broke. Thank you again to Algorand and Reach for sponsoring the series. If you have any questions about blockchain development, please join me in the Reach Discord in the Days of Blockchain channel. See you next time, and happy coding!